Hello friends, uh, today I am going to present uh, a topic. The topic here is the point of care testing in the infectious uh, disease diagnosis. So there is a tremendous need for the diagnosis of uh, disease uh, within a given time and if the diagnosis uh, is uh, getting delayed, definitely the treatment will be getting delayed. So different type of uh, devices, different type of technologies, different type of uh, instruments uh, is uh, using and uh, they have a future aspect also. They are continuously innovating uh, different ideas uh, uh, that is used for the diagnosis of uh, infectious diseases, diagnosis of uh, different type of uh, uh, parameters that is essential for the treatment, for the early treatment. If the early diagnosis uh, is occurred, definitely the early treatment will be occurred. So now coming to my topic, the topic is the point of care testing. It is also called as a bedside testing and it is uh, defined as a rapid diagnostic technique at or near the point of care that is at the time and place of patient care. So it is uh, required that uh, at the time and at the place of uh, when the patient is suffering, a quick diagnosis uh, should be given. So what is going on in the point of care testing? There are so many devices having a basic principle for the detection of uh, different type of biomolecules like uh, nucleic acid, RNA, protein, uh, the protein of uh, viruses, protein of uh, secreted by the bacteria, exotoxins, endotoxins. So all that things is to be measured uh, uh, by using different type of the samples like saliva, uh, urine, blood samples. And finally, the diagnosis uh, is to be done by using some uh, devices. Uh, they have a particular uh, uh, detecting techniques uh, the devices are working on based on uh, microfluidics, uh, paper assay, lateral flow and uh, plasminonic uh, technologies, compact molecular diagnostic systems. So all these uh, detecting devices uh, are used in the case of uh, POCT for early and quick diagnosis. Finally, if the early diagnosis uh, taken place, uh, definitely the treatment giving early response to the patient. So traditionally what is going on uh, in, the POC, uh, in the routine uh, test uh, that uh, the patient uh, giving two visits uh, for uh, first is for uh, test and results and uh, second again uh, uh, the patient will go for the laboratory to taking their uh, diagnostic response or diagnostic results. If uh, uh, he will get the diagnostic uh, result uh, within time he will go to the doctor for their uh, uh, treatment. Uh, but in the scenario of POCT, uh, there is a need that uh, within a one visit, the patient get their result and uh, uh, within a one visit, uh, he will getting respond for the treatment. So here the uh, slide uh, showing that uh, the POCT is basically based on detection of different type of uh, biorecognition elements uh, uh, with uh, the help of uh, uh, presence of different type of uh, analyte. These analyte bind uh, uh, to the biomolecules, uh, either they are fluorescent material, either they are matrix, uh, either uh, uh, they are in the form of conjugates. Uh, so these analytes having uh, different uh, uh, types and uh, they are uh, bind to the certain biomolecules either they are giving uh, the color and uh, they are detecting colorimetrically uh, either they are uh, uh, giving fluorescence uh, so the different type of uh, uh, patterns is to be recognized uh, either electrochemically either optically or either mechanically and uh, uh, their devices uh, are basically made up of, of uh, different principles of electrochemical, optical and mechanical and uh, these devices uh, then uh, read out 
this uh, presence of a different uh, color and uh, fluorescence or their mass their gravity their uh, electron uh, uh, conducting behavior and finally the report will be submitted or uh, 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 transferring to the electronic media like computer like mobiles like uh, smartphone technologies and uh, it will further used for the necessary action or uh, it may be also used for uh, uh, central laboratory for further uh, preparedness so the currently different type of uh, poct devices uh, are uh, used and uh, the poc devices is uh, divided according to their use their need uh, like uh, in the operation Uh, different type of uh, disposable reusable multifunctional uh, pocts are used like uh, rapid test uh, kit uh, they are disposable in nature thermometer they are reusable in nature then uh, uh, bench top analyzer they are multifunctional uh, while in case of utility uh, if they are using in uh, clinics like uh, blood analyzer or they are in using the field like uh, blood pressure monitor uh, on the basis of uh, sampling they may be invasive type like uh, blood glucose monitor or non invasive type uh, like uh, pregnancy test kit uh, they may be according to their result reporting like uh, visible and uh, electronic uh, display so they are visible uh, with the deep stick uh, technique uh, in this uh, the fluorescence or uh, the color is to be visible while in the electronic display uh, it is uh, like uh, pulse oximeter on the basis of uh, cost uh, they are maybe very cheap uh, like deep sticks uh, or may be highly uh, costly like uh, portable sonography machines uh on the basis of analysis uh, they may be qualitative like uh, malaria detection kits uh, like semi quantitative like uh, urine deep sticks and uh, qualitative like uh, blood analyzer so now uh, i am focusing on my topic uh, the poct that is used for the detection of infectious uh, diseases Uh, the different type of uh, infectious agents uh, like uh, in the pandemic uh, the corona virus is uh, uh, making havoc uh, uh, and uh, certain uh, type of uh, research work so many research works are going on uh, just not uh, for the curing of the disease but also for a diagnosis of the disease out of them uh, uh, in the india uh the scientist of uh, departments of uh, science and technology also diagnose uh, uh and uh, innovate one um, uh one uh device uh, that is uh, detect uh, uh, covid within a second uh, this device basically uh, based on uh, thermo regulation uh, re- regulatory mechanism it will detect the temperature of the body and uh, it will detect the if there is a presence of uh, covid uh, it will detect uh, and it will uh, uh, give the positive result or negative result within a second the scientist uh, in the uk university uh, like brunel uh, sancaster and uh, suri uh, they also developed uh, one device uh, so these all are basically the examples uh, which i am uh, presenting here Uh, so there are a lot of devices uh, uh, like uh, at my uh, right hand side there is one device uh, uh, this is uh, uh, this is uh, innovated by the cornell universities uh, uk and uh, uh, this device is basically detect uh, the environmental presence of any coronavirus so this device is uh, uh, will be helpful uh, in the classrooms in the uh, different uh, halls uh, where the gathering of people is more or uh, in the uh, different uh, places uh, like a bus and a transportation uh, system so this device may be helpful for the diagnosis of uh, coronavirus uh, in the environment 
So basically uh, the POCT is based on the detection of uh, different type of uh, nucleic acid. Uh, these uh, manufacturers uh, are uh, uh, manufacturing uh, devices uh, uh, like uh, one drop ink, uh, the authorization from uh, 5th November 2020 will be given by uh, the US EU a emergency unit authorization. Uh, that is approved by the FDA Food and Drug uh, Administration. So all these uh, devices are basically uh, approved by Food and Drug Administration and then after that will be utilized by the uh, world's different area. So in case of uh, some antibodies uh, also to be used by different manufacturer for the det detection so they are uh, preparing the kits, uh, uh, these manufacturers are about Assure, uh, Autobio. Okay, so these uh, different uh, manufacturers are uh, generally uh, preparing different type of the devices for the POCT. Recently in India, uh, the two commercial devices uh, from uh, Sugan Tech, uh, Respi Strict and uh, Roy Biotech, uh, they developed uh, the device uh, uh, that will detect uh, the SARS-CoV-2 that is a uh, viral RNA uh, with the principle of uh, based on the principle of uh, immuno immunochromatography and lateral flow immunoassay and uh, also. And uh, the presence of a viral antigen detection uh, uh, by done by the standard sandwich ELISA uh, that is developed by the Roy Biotech. So uh, the different uh, devices is to be developed and are using uh, currently, but uh, uh, there are few some challenges uh, to the POCT like. Uh, the POCT devices uh, they are highly costly uh, they are not uh, uh, like that that uh, the patient can be used it frequently very easily uh, the POCT devices cannot be able to reuse and uh, the POCT is uh, not applicable uh, to the single sample to diagnose all possibilities and uh, the requirement uh, uh, of uh, the different uh, biomarkers uh, to test uh, uh, before diagnosis. So uh, there is a uh, good thing is that uh, uh, if uh, we are uh, doing the POCT point of care testing at the place of patient definitely the chances of contamination of uh, uh, material uh, sample is uh, reduced uh, the chances of uh, transportation that uh, the time consumed in the transportation is also reduced. So this is a good thing but also the challenges to the POCT is there. So now there is a need of multiplex POCT. So this is a new term. Multiplex new cities, uh, POCT is basically uh, involved that uh, use of a single sample instead of uh, too many samples like saliva, urine, blood. So there is a need of uh, test uh, the disease uh, by using a single sample as well as uh, should be non-invasive uh, and uh, require the confirmation of a single biomarker and uh, test before diagnosis. And uh, uh, there is a need of uh, such type of uh, instrument that are very cheap, uh, that are uh, very small in size. So finally, if uh, uh, the multiplex uh, POCT is uh, under the uh, procedure, uh, it will be the future aspect uh, for the development of such type of the POCTs that will uh, definitely helpful for uh, human use as well as uh, for the animal use. Now the characteristics of the XPOCTs. 
that is should capable of testing of uh, different kind of uh, substances like uh, uh, drugs proteins rna cell component and uh, it should be a uh, very low cost uh, and uh, a non expert person can also handle then uh, uh, the low sample consumption like the blood from the finger prick is uh, or the ability to measure in uh, non invasive samples like uh, saliva urine exalted breath all that things uh, is uh, uh, required in the case of the x pct there is a ease of storage long shelf life with extended uh, reagent storage fast sample to result time enable and um, immediate uh, treatment automatic or facile system operation with minimizing user intervention cheap and portable read out system uh, handled uh, uh, that is uh, handled readers along with the disposable test strip or cartridge so the x pct is basically uh, should be very small in the size and uh, now uh, there are uh, uh, the innovations and uh, the uh, the research work is going on uh, for uh, the microfluidics uh, uh, and uh, the chip on uh, uh, lab lab on chip methods uh, which is uh, very small in the size and it will be helpful for the diagnosis uh, very quickly and with a very small amount of uh, sample so now comes to the uh, the basic uh, knowledge of the microfluidics uh, uh the microfluidics uh, is based on uh the diagnosis of uh, agent and the there is uh, basically 3 square millimeter size of uh, chip having uh, different type of conjugates uh, or different type of primers or different type of uh, analytes uh, they are already in built in them and uh, we are just using uh, a uh, small size like 5 micro liter of uh, blood to detect uh, uh, our sample for the diagnosis of infectious disease uh, this uh, microfluidic uh, chips basically made up of uh, glasses or silicones uh, uh, but again uh, uh, actually this is uh, working on the capillary electrophoresis uh, technique but again uh, uh, there is a problem with that uh, that uh, they are uh, uh, environmental uh, non friendly non friendly and uh, uh, there are hazards for the environment so we have to go through the eco friendly devices uh, uh, which are to be uh, which should be used instead of that uh, a team from dublin city university and university of california in 2020 also develop lab on chip device uh, uh, promises hiv diagnosis within 10 minutes so here you can see that uh, chip uh, having the small blood volume like 5 micro liter of uh, blood uh, it will uh, uh, further separate its rbc and the plasma will be extracted the plasma will further go uh, towards the biomarker detection site and uh, here Uh, the detection of uh, different uh, uh, agents with the help of uh, the different biomarkers is there finally the result uh, is to be uh, read out by different techniques uh, like uh, change in the ph like change in the electrical conductivity of uh, the material and it will be read out with uh, the smartphone technology or chip or it may be read out by the computers so in the present scenario in 2020 sars cov 2 point of care molecular diagnostic test is uh, uh, um, developed by and uh, they are uh, uh, prepared by this type of uh, uh, different type of uh, the companies like uh, only one sample is to be detected within 1 minute by a bot company and uh, biotech company uh, will be in uh, 30 minutes uh, they show that uh, uh, about uh, 25 to 30 samples uh, will be tested 
by uh, Cepheids and uh, Mole Bio companies within uh, 45 minutes. So they all are uh, preparing different POCT devices for uh, detection of SARS-CoV-2 uh, within a, a given time and if the diagnosis will become faster definitely the treatment will be assured. Now comes to the challenges of uh, XPOCTs. Reaching the optimal space of high performance and low complexity cost and size has uh, same challenge. The scientists, uh, hospitals, manufacturers and policy makers must assure that the data gathered from this device uh, would be secure and uh, that the devices uh, and materials used in conjunction with it uh, remain affordable and safe. Uh, in addition to these things, the device themselves uh, should be functional for a long period of time and uh, should find way to deal with their sensitivity to patient uh, to patient variation and the environment like humidity and temperature. So uh, the definitely the POCT devices uh, are also uh, generating the reports and this uh, reports will be connected to the server. Definitely that uh, report should not be uh, theft by other people for use uh, their own purpose and uh, the devices uh, uh, also hamper or also consider the humidity and temperature they should be used again and again they should be portable they should be very uh, small in size and cost effective now current type of uh, diagnostic devices uh, that are being used uh, they are based basically on uh, different type of principles like paper based systems uh, array based systems uh, bead based uh, bead based systems so in case of the paper based system the example is the lateral flow immunoassay in case of uh, array based system the basically uh, the device uh, detect uh, the material uh, with the help of electrodes or with the help of fluorescent uh, dye uh, in case of a bead based system the device uh, uh, is uh, for example the device is a flow cytometer uh, here uh, the infectious agent uh, is uh, attested with analyte and that analyte is basically a bead and uh, the, there is a separation of uh, this uh, biomolecule with the help of uh, analyte in uh, size in their color and finally it will be read out by the flow cytometry the POCT technology uh, is classified on the basis of our working on the basis of uh, uh, detection of either nucleic acid or either uh, with the help of uh, lateral flu immunases the nucleic acid is again either based on isothermal amplification techniques or the detection is either by PCR techniques. So the difference is in both of them that the temperature here in the isothermal amplification the temperature is very constant and in case of the PCR the temperature is variable about three type of different temperature is to be used in case of the PCR. So in the isothermal amplification again uh, the nucleic acid uh, uh, sequence based analysis and uh, the lamp uh, is commonly used uh, and in case of the PCR uh, there are two type of the techniques in the PCR first is the time domain that is uh, there is one big thermocycler machine is to be used uh, it will take a time but uh, if uh, the space domain type of PCR is used uh, like uh, chip based PCR or miniaturized PCR is used so this is classified under this type of classification. Now comes to the lateral flow assay they are again uh, classified into the uh, nucleic acid based and the amino based so if uh, on the paper we are uh, amplifying the nucleic acid and uh, uh, then diagnose it uh, it is called as a nucleic acid based uh, lateral flow in assay or if uh, on the paper we are diagnosing the different type of the antibodies uh, so or either with the help of antibodies we are detecting detecting the antigen definitely it is called as a immuno based uh, lateral flow in assay 
now comes to the principle of uh, lateral flow immunoassay uh, basically the lateral flow immunoassay is uh, based on a paper uh, on that paper uh, that may be an hydrocellulose paper uh, on that paper there is a different type of pad one is a sample pad second is a conjugate pad third is a test line fourth is control line fifth is a nitrocell uh, fifth is a absorb absorption pad so the sample pad uh, having uh, area for the sample the sample will be either urine either blood or uh, it may be any type of uh, material like saliva the sample uh, may be serum the sample will uh, uh, is uh, go uh, towards uh, the absorption pad with the help of uh, capillary action and during this action it will uh, uh, joint with the analyte the analyte uh, is uh, here uh, like the antibody as a primary antibody or it is a basically a labeled antibody now after the capillary action it will uh, go towards the primary antibody so the primary if uh, the antigen is there in the sample definitely the primary antibody will bind and uh, it will give color if uh, the sample containing uh, uh, the pathogen is not there if the pathogen is not there definitely the test line will be uh, negative and uh, the primary antibody will not bind to our interest of uh, uh, antigen then uh, through the capillary action the sample will go towards the control line here at the control line uh, the secondary antibodies is there uh, and uh, uh, here the same antigen is also present uh, here it will give the color definitely and uh, uh, the control line is always positive so ultimately the result uh, uh, will be either presence of both line colored it will call as a positive result if the one control line is positive and the test line will be colorless definitely it will be become negative uh, the rest of sample will be absorbed uh, to the absorption pad this technique uh, lateral flow immunoassay is uh, used in clinics uh, that is about 47 percent the use of this lateral immunoassay is about 28 percent in the field of uh, food safety in case of uh, the veterinary about 12 percent of this assay is to be used 5 percent uh, is used for the environmental study and uh, in other cases 8 percent of uh, this lateral immuno assay is to be used for the diagnosis now comes to the different analytes uh, uh, the lateral flow immunoassay is basically based on uh, calorimetrically uh, the color uh, producing uh, calorimetric reagents are there and uh, that are 82.5 percent fluorescence is given by 12.3 percent so 12.3 uh, percent uh, analytes are fluorescence based 1.8 percent are uh, sers based so SERS that is the surface enhanced uh, uh, Raman spectroscopy about 1.3% uh, are based on uh, chemiluminescence 1.2% uh, based on the magnetization and other is uh, about 0.9% is to be used uh, as an analyte now uh, uh, the analyte may be uh, the gold nanoparticle that is 88% 2.6% uh, are latex uh, is used uh, 2.1% carbon nanoparticle used 1.9% uh, composite uh, nanoparticle used 1.9 magnetic nanoparticle used 0.8% enzymes are used and other is about 0.3% uh, are used in case of uh, lateral flow immunoassay recently in uh, 2020 uh, from uh, junagadh uh, university the department that is a VPS department in uh, uh, Gujarat in India 
they reported that the lateral flow assay as a field test for zero diagnosis of uh, brucellosis in the uh, small ruminants and they reported that uh, the lateral flow immunoassay is uh, good and uh, rather than other tests like rbpt and elisa and uh, they consider that the performance of uh, lfa is comparable to rbpt considering e elisa as a gold standard except the sensitivity of lfa so uh, we know that uh, the lateral flow immunoassay is uh, very uh, uh, is uh, used to detecting the organism also in the field condition but the sensitivity is uh, not good and uh, uh, again there is a requirement to enhance the sensitivity in case of the lateral flow immunoassay best techniques different type of uh, the field applications uh, like in the clinical applications uh, different type of uh, viruses and related infection bacteria and related infection other disease infection is to be diagnosed with the help of uh, using lateral flow immunoassay so this is a list of uh, different type of uh, diagnosis uh, in which uh, the lateral flow immunoassay is used in case of veterinary uh, there are different uh, bacteria like uh, canine adenovirus uh, like brucellosis gumboro disease uh, bovine mastitis mycobacterium bovis infection uh, bovine babesiosis different type of uh, other agents like uh, uh, trypanosomiasis fasciolysis canine visceral leishmaniasis toxoplasmosis some viruses like uh, african swine fever virus rabies virus porcine epidemic diarrhea virus bovine rota virus avian uh, leukosis virus avian infectious uh, bronchitis virus newcastle disease virus foot and mouth disease virus canine adenovirus they are detecting uh, in uh, uh, with the help of the basic principle of uh, lateral flow assay and uh, especially the lateral flow immunoassay so the antibodies is also used again uh, detection of this uh, antigens in the world this list is a detection of different pesticides pathogens heavy metals and other pollutants in the environment they are also detected by the help of lateral flow immunoassay application in the case of food safety different bacteria like e coli salmonella campylobacter vibrio then uh, e coli o157 h7 salmonella campylobacter jejuni vibrio allergens hormones pesticide these all are uh, basically used in the case of food safety and uh, these all are detected by help of uh, lateral flow immunoassay in agriculture in the forensic in the industrial area and other side uh the uh, we are using the lateral flow immunoassay for the work now comes to the limitation the limitation is that uh, the lateral flow assay is uh, lacking their sensitivity as well as uh, the specificity at certain level uh because it uh, just detect uh, the array of uh, pathogen and protein we are antibodies so there is a need uh, of uh, different nucleic acid based amplification techniques uh, uh, which can amplify a particular pathogen nucleic acid and enhances its uh, sensitivity and specificity so uh, now uh, viewing this point uh, the new technique that is a nucleic acid amplification technique at uh, paper based uh, assay is uh, used uh in this technique uh, the following following steps is to be required first is the lysis of organism then uh, it will require purification after purification the dna will be amplified or the genome will be amplified and finally it will be detected by either fluorescence or either any analyte uh, in this technique the detection is based on a smartphone 
technology or computer based technology the not essay is highly specific and highly sensitive because it will definitely amplify the genome product the dna product and it require amplification also so the amplification is of two types either on the basis of the pcr on the chip uh, a miniaturized version of uh, the conventional pcr which require th three different temperatures to amplify while uh, it also uh, use the isothermal amplification technique in this uh, using a specific enzyme denature the double stranded uh, dna uh, it operates at low temperature consume less power and does not require heavy equipment but uh, the other techniques uh, like uh, uh, rolling circle amplification and uh, nucleic acid sequence based amplification and uh, standard uh, displacement amplification they require uh, the denaturation of this uh, dna at the high temperature so it is worthless in the field uh, because uh, the high temperature is uh, uh, maybe harmful uh, in the field level or for the device also but uh, uh, the other technique like uh, recombinase polymerase amplification rpa and loop mediated amplification yani ki lamp uh, does not use heat for denaturation and uh, the rpa is uh, quite simple because uh, it is uh, the reaction just in the tube and uh, it does not require any temperature uh, it will be operated at the room temperature at 37 to 42 degree centigrade so it is uh, quite easy and efficient and uh, also a uh, specific for uh, the nucleic acid so after coming to amplification the detection is to be done either by cyber green or uh, hydroxyl naphthol blue and uh, the instrument such as uh, bart and uh, loop amp real time turbidometer are used for the detection of uh, the color or either the fluorescence now on the basis of uh, lamp uh, and uh, not test uh, the principle the different devices that are listed uh, at my left hand side and uh, uh, the pathogen detected at the right hand side is there like the biofilm biofire film assay uh, biofire film array uh, by biomeric uh, is a multiplex pcr technology used to detect various uh, disorders and pathogens uh, like loop amp is uh, detecting mycoplasma pneumoniae bordetella species legionella pneumoniae h1 pdm 2009 influenza influenza a virus influenza a subtype h5 uh, west nil virus so different type of uh, viruses to be detected uh, by using this technique by amplification of uh, nucleic acid this is a device uh, loop uh, mp detection uh, device uh, uh, and uh, this device is basically used for the lamp assay this is a very portable very small in size and uh, we can easily detect uh, the pathogen within 20 minutes now again uh, there is a uh, few devices uh, like uh, multitof and uh, i assets and uh, film array bcid this device uh, will take only 1 to 2 hours uh, for the detection of pathogen while uh, we know that uh, traditionally in the microbiology lab a microbe uh, will grow on the culture and uh, of, uh, for the detection of uh, this microorganism it will again take 2 to 3 days or sometimes 7 to 8 days for the detection of microorganisms the application of a lamp for detection of various pathogens uh, here is uh, giving the table of viruses and bacteria west nil virus coronavirus norovirus highly pathogenic avian influenza fmd classical swine fever porcine cytomegalovirus various pox virus like camel pox uh, capri pox uh, porcine sarcovirus nd virus ibd md infectious uh, bronchitis virus chicken infectious anemia virus 
एंड द बैक्टीरिया लाइक बर्कोलडेरिया सीडोमेलियाई शिगेला एंट्रो इन्वेजिव इकोलाई ब्रूसेला यर्सिनी एंट्रोडेटिका वेरियस टाइप ऑफ स्टेफेलोकोकस स्ट्रेन स्ट्रेप्टोकोकस स्विस सो द लैम्प टेक्निक इज यूज फॉर द डिटेक्शन ऑफ सच टाइप ऑफ पैथोजेंस इन द वर्ल्ड now there is a limitation of uh, the not uh, the first limitation is uh, the amplification of uh, the dna and rna because uh, uh, for that it is required the extraction and purification if uh, there is a delay uh, so there is a, a delay in the extraction and the purification uh, the definitely the nonsense dna will be bind and it will give false result and it will again take a time because uh, uh, extraction and purification is also the steps uh, which uh, will take time isothermal amplification there is a lamp uh, in this uh, case uh, three three uh, dimers three primers uh, are used uh, so there is a risk of uh, primer dimer formation and leads to false positive determination of uh, uh, the presence of pathogen now next is the recombinase polymerase amplification now comes to the recombinase polymerase amplification so this is a uh, the best technique whatever is there uh, it does not require the formation of any cdna it will detect uh, m mrna then uh, double stranded dna single stranded dna and uh, it does not require any formation of uh, cdna it will uh, work uh, at uh, room temperature and it will uh, work uh, at uh, uh, in the tube and uh, it will not require any sophisticated instrument so it will based on uh, the presence of uh, three proteins first is a recombinase protein second uh, is the single stranded binding protein and third one is a strand displacing dna polymerase the basic principle is uh, the uh, the recombinase protein binds to the primer so it will uh, uh, read and uh, then uh, it will bind at the end of 3 prime and 5 uh, prime of the ends of dna then after binding the single stranded binding protein will uh, uh, bind at the both of ends so it will uh, prevent the rejoining of uh, the strands then uh, the the strand displacing dna polymerase will uh, uh, form uh, and run on the 5 prime 3 prime direction and both directions and it will uh, uh, polymerize uh, the dna and uh, the double stranded will be formed so the feature of uh, rpa is uh, uh, are the highly sensitive and uh, selective isothermal amplification technique operating at 37 to 42 degree centigrade with uh, minimal sample preparation capable of amplifying at low as 1 to 10 dna target copies in the less than 20 minutes it has been used to amplify diverse uh, targets including rna mirna single stranded dna and double stranded dna from a wide variety of organisms and samples rpa has been successfully integrated with different detection strategies from end point lateral flow ss strip to real time flow center detection amongst other so this technique is used in different organisms for the detection and the organisms and the list is there so the, this uh, list is the or organisms uh, the target uh, like double stranded dna the sample what the sample is to be taken then heat source then amplification then temperature then limit of detection 
so the rpa is the basic principle is used to detect a different type of uh, pathogens so this is again a list of uh, different type of pathogens now the next principle of uh, poct is based on the luminescence uh, immunoassay so there are uh, three type of uh, luminescence like photoluminescence chemiluminescence and uh, bioluminescence here uh, i am just uh, describing what is the bioluminescence that uh, in the nature the luciferin is converted uh, in the presence of uh, luciferase into oxyluciferin it will emit light and also uh, it will produce atp and this atp is again used by the luciferin for the production of uh, oxyluciferin so uh, some type of uh, biomolecules uh, that are used uh, as an analyte uh, for the detection of uh, different uh, pathogens uh, that are producing fluorescence or the light so here uh, there is uh, one device it is called as a snap device and this snap device is uh, based on the principle of uh, elisa uh, here uh, we are detecting the antigen we are adding the primary antibodies and uh, then we are adding secondary antibodies and this is a direct sandwich elisa uh, based technique uh, finally the secondary antibodies is bind uh, to the fluorescent material and it will give the color and uh, the fluorescence and that fluorescence will be easily uh, observed by a naked eye so this is uh, basically uh, called as a clia based test that is a chemiluminescence immunoassay based te te uh, test and uh, the basic principle of this is uh, used uh, in the case of detection of a pathogen like a feline leukemia virus feline immunodeficiency virus dilophyreria imitis canine parvovirus uh, early chikungunya pseudo rabies so there is a long list for that porcine reproductive and uh, respiratory syndrome classical swine fever virus swine influenza mycoplasma pneumonia equine infectious anemia brucella botus bovine herpes virus bovine leukemia my mycobacterium avium mycobacterium uh, uh, avium paratuberculosis bovine viral diarrhea virus foot and mouth disease virus transmissible spongiform encephalopathy mycobacterium bovis avium encephalomyelitis avian uh, leukosis virus avian uh, rio virus so there are different type of the viruses and bacteria are used uh, for detection now next uh, the article is uh, there i uh, i'm just reading and so that i'm interested to also put it uh, in this my slide and the article is uh, maldetoff mass spectrometry and emerging technology for microbial identification and diagnosis so what is the basic principle of uh, maldita of uh, that uh, it will separate the organism on the basis of its mass and charges the organism is uh, uh, loaded in the instrument uh, or the pathogen is loaded in the instrument and finally the instrument will uh, uh, divide the organism on the basis of their charges and uh, on the basis of uh, mass and uh, finally uh, there will be a plot of uh, uh, table or plot of uh, uh, the curve and we can now know that uh, how the organisms will be uh, identified here i am uh, using this slide uh, uh, list of fda approved devices so there is one excel sheet i will show you at the end of uh, the slide presentation so uh, the devices are approved uh, by the fda and then it will be marketed and it will be used further for the diagnosis of uh, infectious diseases and uh, different uh, uh, diseases different uh, uh different uh, biochemical agents also now uh, there is now my ending of presentation with uh, uh just uh, giving you uh, the knowledge about uh, the poc devices in the indian healthcare used 
these uh, devices are very limited in the india and uh, in the india for the detection of infectious disease uh, like uh, antibody igm igg for the dengue virus in the human blood dengue virus uh, ns1 antigen and antibodies uh, to dengue virus then uh, e coli shiga toxin from the fecal sample and the poc device used are uh, uh, the pent bio dengue duo cassettes uh, sd bioline dengue duo cassettes and the basic principle is the immuno uh, chromatographic assay hiv all the group of hiv 1 and 2 they are also detected with the basic principle of lateral flow immuno assay and uh, the gold particle colloidal gold nanoparticle are used uh they are supplied by the abort uh, india limited uh, in the india the rapid uh, drug screening is also be done uh, with the help of so toxa mobile test system so uh these are all about the pct devices uh, and uh, finally the future of pct and conclusion is that there is a need of uh, the production of uh, x pct devices uh, which are which should be cheaper which should be reliable which should be sensitive uh, should be specific uh, um, and uh, the devices uh, should be portable uh, they should be uh, eco friendly also so the conclusion is uh, that there is a need of uh, the pct devices uh, which should be reliable and uh, they should uh, take uh, less time for the detection of uh, infectious uh, disease so that uh, the treatment uh, uh, will uh, start as soon as possible so thank you uh, for uh, listening carefully and uh, thank you very much for my presentation uh, thanks to all audience thanks